Hello, I'm Liliana Borcha. I'm an applied mathematician uh, from the University of Michigan in Ann Arbor. So I was actually approached by the organizers, in particular Luke, Luke Bennett. He, he wrote to me and asked me if I would be interested in, uh, in participating in this program, and I was quite excited about that because uh, it's, it's a program on on multiple uh, wave scattering effects and, and that is a, a, a big theme of my research and I, I understood from Luke that this will involve mathematicians and physicists and I thought that would be quite a great opportunity to participate. And then I, I found to my great uh, surprise, uh, pleasant surprise, that in fact there will be other two programs that uh, run at the same time at, at the Institute. So one is on tomography and, and that is uh, a, a, a topic that is uh, very important in the field of inverse problems, which I'm, you know, I'm part of. So that was really a very nice surprise. And then there's also the program on data-driven methods in science and engineering, which is also, uh, you know, of great interest of mine. So it was really, a very, very good opportunity to be here. My lecture is on a problem which is known as an inverse wave scattering problem. This is a problem that is of great interest in many applications, uh, ranging from medical imaging, for example, ultrasound, uh, but also uh, problems in radar imaging, uh, seismology, earth exploration, and so on. And it's what we call an inverse problem for, for the wave equation, uh, where we try to, so physically we're trying to understand, you know, the, the structure of a medium by probing it with waves and measuring, uh, you know, the scattered wave field. And uh, mathematically, what this is, is uh, an inverse problem for the wave equation where you try to estimate uh, coefficients in the wave equation, in particular the wave speed. Uh, now, this problem is an old problem, actually, so many, it has been studied over many years, and there are two, two kinds of methods um, uh, that one, one sees in the field. The first one is what we call qualitative methods. They are also known as imaging methods, and these are uh, designed to to find the sort of what we call reflective structures in a medium. And they are mathematically modeled by the rough part of the coefficients, for example, jump discontinuities. And these kinds of methods are very well developed, at least in the case where the waves propagate from the sensors um, to the reflective structures that you want to find through a, a, a known medium. Typically, that medium would be homogeneous. For example, imagine you have waves traveling through air and, you know, they scatter off airplanes and then they come back. Uh, so these are qualitative methods. What I want to talk about is what we call quantitative methods. So quantitative methods are concerned not only with finding the location of reflective structures, but we are actually interested in finding uh, as much as we can about the, the function, the, the wave speed function, you know, like in a quantitative way. So these problems are much harder than, than, the, than the ones considered in qualitative methods. And usually they are uh, solved using optimization. And uh, the optimization formulation is what we call a data fitting, least squares data fitting. And it's a, you know, it's a quite intuitive formulation, it has very nice justification based on noise models. For example, if you have additive Gaussian noise, then it looks like, you know, it's, it's a very good formulation. The problem is that in many, in most applications, uh, this method has serious difficulties and there are three essential causes for it. So one is that the mathematical mapping between the unknown wave speed and uh, the, the measure uh, and the, the wave field that you measure is complicated, is nonlinear, and quite complicated. Uh, the second is that uh, the data acquisition geometry is usually 
what we call in the reflection mode. So that is you only see the medium from one side. So you, you emit waves from here and you receive sort of in the same kind of place, you know, what comes back. So you only work with the backscattered waves. And third, um, usually the waves that you use for probing are high frequency waves. And there are various reasons for that. One of them is that it's known that in order to get good details about the medium, in other words, to get good resolution of the reconstruction, you know, that depends on the wavelength uh, of the waves that you probe the medium with. And, and uh, uh, the smaller the wavelength, the better the resolution you would think. So that's why we like to probe uh, the medium with high frequency waves. Now, this, all these effects uh, create uh, an objective function when you do data fitting that is really, really nasty. So if you look at the landscape, uh, it's uh, full of local, uh, local minima. And they are, uh, this local minima you can see uh, far away from the, true, the, from the solution and also near the solution. So it, it's really challenging to optimize such an ob objective function with um, you know, uh, efficient numerical methods that would be gradient-based like Newton-type methods. So in order to, to, to find, to try to find the global minimum, you, you may perhaps look at stochastic methods, but that's usually very difficult because the problem is that, you know, it involves many dimensions. So, I mean, the, you know, you're looking for a function, so it's a high dimensional search. So, um, so uh, because of this, it's very, very difficult to solve the problem using data fitting uh, in the least square sense. And so there, there has been a lot of interest uh, in the mathematical community and also uh, you know, other sciences, in particular earth scientists are very interested in this problem, um, to, to do better. So the question is how to do better. And uh, so there are many approaches. There is uh, one approach that uh, says, well, we shouldn't measure the misfit of the data in, uh, you know, uh, in, in the least square sense, like the L2, the, what we call the L2 norm. And uh, using instead other metrics, for example, optimal, optimal transportation metrics, like the Wasserstein method. So there are uh, very interesting mathematical studies that show that that could be useful. That doesn't completely solve the problem. Uh, it still doesn't make the objective function convex but it does work better than the usual approach. There are other methods that try to use uh, what we call, you know, that, that try to, uh, to enrich the search space. So don't look just for the, the, the wave speed, maybe look, for example, for the, for the uh, source wavelet, you know, or other things. So, you know, so you, you, you enhance the search space. And then you come up with uh, some sort of a criterion after that, you know, to, to narrow what the answer you get to, towards something that is physically meaningful. So these kinds of approaches have, uh, have been developed recently. They also show promise, but again, they don't solve the problem. <laughs> so they're still difficult. So what we are trying to do is we are trying to, um, to use ideas from uh, a field in uh, computational science, which is called data-driven reduced order modeling. And we are trying to use such ideas to sort of improve the state of the art in this problem. And that's what I want to talk about. So uh, what we propose is instead of sort of uh, trying to, to minimize the misfit, instead to, uh, to, to try to, to use the data to construct uh, 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 some matrices, which we call reduced order models of uh, this, this, this reduced order models uh, basically mimic, uh, I mean mimic, they, they capture in an algebraic way, uh, wave propagation. And I will talk about two such reduced order models and uh, how to construct them from the data. And in fact, it turns out so that, you know, constructing a reduced order model from the data, it's a little bit difficult, but not very difficult. 
uh, but what is really difficult is to get a register of the model to uh, to help you to, to solve the inverse problem. So that is uh, a little bit more difficult, and that's what I want to talk about. Um, so this is my second visit to the Institute. Uh, the first time I came here, it was a long time ago. It was a program on inverse problems, and so I'm very happy to be here. Uh, what excites me is, uh, first of all, the opportunity to tell my community and sort of related communities that I don't necessarily meet in, in, in the usual workshops that I attend um, about what I'm doing and uh, hopefully get feedback and, uh, you know, start some new collaborations. But also I'm a, I'm a, a very excited about the opportunity to, to listen to the many, you know, great scientists that are here. So uh, I, I just arrived, basically yesterday was my, my first day at the Institute and I already attended a very interesting, uh, uh, interesting lecture on uh, uh, waves in, uh, uh, through inhomogeneous waveguides, which is was quite a fascinating thing. I, I, I saw a phenomenon that I never heard of before, so I would be very interested to study that. Uh, so, you know, just the opportunity to, to talk to these people, to also interact with the people in the other programs. Like I said, um, the, the fact that, you know, you have this, uh, this program in tomography, I know a lot of the, the people uh, participating in that, and, and it's really great to reconnect with them and, and to see what's new there. And also the program in data science, I mean, uh, data-driven uh, methods in engineering, uh, that's very interesting. Uh, my work on reduced order modeling is, in fact, a data-driven um, approach, uh, maybe not quite, uh, you know, what is, is, you know, the mainstream in the, in the program here, but I think it has sort of like a, a nice connection. And yeah, so I'm, I'm just, you know, excited to, to, to meet all these people, you know, and to, to tell them to see what, what they think about what we are doing, maybe start some collaboration, maybe we see some, uh, you know, maybe we can build some bridges between our methods and their methods and, you know, just learn and, and you know, hopefully give back a little bit and, uh, and you know, hopefully start some new projects.